Okay, we're back. We're live for the three o'clock block on a given Monday. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're talking about community matters today. We're also talking about politics in Hawaii with Dennis Isaki and Michael Curtis, who join us from Lihui, Kauai. Nice to talk to you guys. Say hi. Thank you. Hello. So we're going to talk about politics first. And there's so many things to talk about. This could take forever. And we want to actually set up a show called Politics in Hawaii because we need more of that. Our, our listeners have told us so. So Dennis, will you just uh, tell the people why you care about politics in Hawaii? Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, aloha and uh, thanks, Jay. Uh, I like what you do. I first uh, met Jay when he interviewed us at the uh, biodiesel plant on Kauai. Mm -hmm. I've known uh, Mike Curtis for a long time now as a realtor and uh, fellow pilot in the Civil Air Patrol. Yes, he was a strong Republican and head of the local party. Uh, we get together often and get along well, uh, unlike our congressman. <laughs> of course, he could be as right as I am, or I could be as wrong as he is. Anyway, uh, they talk about being conservative or liberal, left or right, uh, you know, in politics. In a way, we flew a small plane together from Kauai to Hilo once. I told him to go left, he wanted to go right. Uh, I told him if we go left, we'll be right. Anyway, we went straight, straight into the rain at Hilo. And you survived. Yeah, we survived. Uh, we, like I say, we get along well, you know, despite the different uh, political thinking. But what is politics or politic? I recall seeing the word when I was a kid in the Reader's Digest, you know, there was a page of vocabulary words. I remember one of, one of the definitions was shrewd and it kind of stuck in my mind. Yes, it, it meant shrewd. I looked it up online and one of the definitions is shrewd or prudent in practical matters, tactful, diplomatic, contrived in a shrewd and practical way Another meaning, activities within an organization that are aimed at improving someone's status or position that are typically considered as devious or divisive. I'm not saying all politicians are bad. Uh, get some good friends uh, who are cold politicians. Uh, I say that because we got to know what politics is if you're going to talk about politics. We have political satire, it's big business. You get Saturday Night Live, all that late night show, comedy shows, uh, the news media tribes on it. They talk about political game. When I was in high school, I don't know, 16 or 17 years old, I, uh, the only class I could take, AP class was political science. I didn't know anything about it. I don't know why, and I didn't learn much. But I had to write a paper. And at that time I wrote, <laughs> uh, some guys might not like this, but I wrote on why the motorcycle helmet law should be repealed. <laughs> You're dating yourself, then. <laughs> yeah. And, and it actually was a few years later. It, it was repealed. So, you know, to this day, that, you know, I don't take credit for it, but I think the, um, the Street Bikers United Hawaii uh, had a lot to it. Talking about uh, politicians, one one politician ran against a powerful Patsy Mink for Congress and lost. Next thing, he became the president of the Hawaii Senate. Yeah. Others have had similar situations. Perhaps I am naive and don't know the ropes. They say politics make strange bedfellows. Both coming from William Shakespeare. Um, Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows as spoken by a shipwrecked man seeking shelter beside a sleeping monster. You know, I'm not saying they're all monsters again. <laughs> Be careful. Anyway, uh, I don't recall uh, knowing much about local uh, politics, but from what I've heard, 
Hawaii was a Republican state for a long time. Republican presidents appointed Republican governors before statehood. And even after that, we had Republican governors. Uh, in, in the 60s, when Burns took over, you know, they had a cause. The 70s have been described as a transitional era when the self-help of the 60s became self-gratification and eventually evolved into selfishness of the uh, 1980s and beyond. We have turned, you know, they said we have turned into the me generation and it had turned into the me, me. They say, enough about me. What can you do for me? That's what it is now. That's Midler. Yeah, 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 somebody, yeah, <laughs> quoting some guy. Uh, there's some good politicians, like I say, some promise things and they tell you what you want to hear. Maybe that's what you got to do, Mike, when you run for office. Uh -huh. But when they, they get into office, you know, they become the me generation too. Once again, not all cold politics are bad. There are many pol uh, politic political action committees. They are uh, a lost count in DC and the local ones here too. But like I said, some are good ones. For example, uh, I was uh, involved in uh, what they call ACRE, Action Committee for Rural Electrification, one that Hawaii's uh, Electric Co-op is involved in. It represented over 900 co-ops throughout the United States and 42 million members. And, you know, when we went to DC, they, they listened. It's, I gotta uh, tell you, I gotta tell you a story. Yeah. So the year is 1966. Before either of you guys was born. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I was dating my wife, and her family lived in Koloa, and uh, her mother used to have a groaning board for food for everybody who came off work on a given weekday. And this guy used to come around uh, for the groaning board to have a little something to drink every day. One day he didn't show up. What happened? Well, he got promoted. So he could still show up. Well, he got promoted. He had to go down to the city county hall in Lihui and register Republican. If you get promoted on the plantation, immediately you have to register Republican. I thought that's very interesting the way that works here in Hawaii. <laughs> in, in your island of Kauai. <clears throat> Anyway, I, you know, Kauai is a pretty tough place, as I remember. Uh, Linda Lingle, you know, was, uh, I, I was with her in her first campaign. Linda Lingle, you know, was um, trying to get some votes in Kauai, but she found that uh, everybody was so angry. What are they called? The Garden Island? <laughs> um, and and uh, she, she never got traction in Kauai for some reason. Kauai has got its politics all of itself, all of its own different from the rest of the state. Mike, you agree to that? I think Tony Cooney Mora probably started it. He was <laughs> a kid. I, I ran for county council twice and Tony said, hey Mike, you can't come a Democrat and you get elected. I said, well, thanks, but no thanks. And politics <laughs> is uh, just two people trying to figure out their issue all the way up to organize where it is now. Well, you know, if you look back at the early days of the plantation, in fact, the, the whole state when plantations were young, yeah. um, I don't think people were too interested in politics. But somewhere along the line, you know, especially around work conditions and the unions on the plantation, people got activated, you know, they got into politics because they realized in the 50s that it would make a difference. And they galvanized themselves and ultimately elected a lot of officials. And that changed things. But before that, I don't, I don't think politics meant a hill of beans to people. Then it started to mean a lot. And I think we're still in the shadow of that. Um, unfortunately, we have too many. Mike, I know you'll agree to this. <clears throat> we have too many Democrats, right? <laughs> it's true. But let's, let's just say too many politicians. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, let me ask you this. Um, Dennis, are you satisfied with the way the system works? Uh, not not totally 
I mean, if it goes my way, I'm satisfied, <laughs> like everybody else. But um, yeah. I, I give you, you know, a small example. I was talking with my friends. I go, it's a big issue, you know, the giveaway, the government giveaway. I say, well, you know, after the Great Depression, the government had the New Deal. They put people they make work jobs, you know, like make work to get to get the money to work. But now I find out that in Congress, like, oh shit, if you say that you're a Republican, and that's a no non starter. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's uh, what party you're in, whether it's good or not, not otherwise. That's not very troublesome. Mike, yeah. there must be people come up to you and say, you're a Republican. <clears throat> you Republicans wreck the country. How can you still be a Republican? What's your answer? I point out that every budget is passed by Congress and Congress is 50-50 essentially right now. And they, they, they pass this budget that spends more than they take in. And they've been doing that for what, 30, 40 years? And they, Social Security, Social Security wasn't gonna be an, an ID and it was never gonna be tapped. The Social Security revenues were gonna be held in a bucket all by themselves until I can't remember when, but then they, then they merged it with the general fund. And we keep spending more than we're taking in, generating an inevitable debt bomb. The last book I read was uh, called The Crash. And it was about where um, China's smaller banks were at risk and the central party wasn't gonna save them. And the only way to save them is to sell a couple trillion bonds dollars of the US bonds that China's holding. So if the Chinese sell, say a trillion dollars of our bonds that they own at a little bit of a discount, that means our one, 2% bonds now are gonna be three, four, 5%. And already we're having a challenge paying the interest of the debt that we have at every level of our, of our government. And the politicians continue promising and the unions continue electing them in Hawaii and other places like Illinois. And the, they budget, they negotiate a good union contract with the HDEA, UPW, HSTA, and giving them um, lifelong medical, all this other stuff. But then they don't fund it. So now we're $200,000 in the hole per beneficiary and 20,000 in the hole per Hawaii resident is what we owe the employee retirement system. And we are, we're about $24 billion. I, I, I think you're, you're, you're trying to get me off the track, Mike. Um, oh, you're, you're, you're changing I, 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 I'm, I'm a person who comes to you and says, you know, the Republicans have wrecked the country. The Republicans okay. have been behind trying to upset the national election. <clears throat> the Republicans are, through Trump, you know, created the uh, uh, the riot in front of the Capitol, in the Capitol. Uh, and they called the, it the Republicans are opposing election. everything that Biden does. Republicans I, I are. I so, could have. So, so what is your answer to that? Why is it still worth up? being a Republican? I could have run a, a much better insurrection than the mob that they called an insurrection, and, and they blamed it on Trump. Um, but like I said. The Congress is what passes the budget, which is where the money is, which is where now every municipality is scrambling to try to spend the funds that are given to them so they don't have to give them back. Um, so does that won't... justify an insurrection? A big pardon? Does that justify an insurrection? Like I said, if that was an insurrection, um, I could have planned a better insurrection than the mob okay. that happened. All right, just say it's an insurrection. Does it justify the mob? The media called it an insurrection, and the media are, are defining the discussion, where the discussion last December was, um, what, an impeachment. I was front page above the fold. Every, everything for about three weeks was impeachment. But in the meantime, on the second page, they didn't share the trillion-dollar budget that was a deficit budget. And it took Republicans and Democrats to do that. But the media put the 
impeachment was on the surface, and that's what they had everybody talking about. They have everybody talking about racism now. I don't believe that racism exists in America the way the media is projecting it. My, my argue with racism is it's, it's granular. It's not the statistics. The statistics is what we used to call profiling. And that was true. But now they're using the same profiling statistics to argue racism. I don't buy that. I think okay. the media has blown that up too. Let me go to Dennis. Dennis, how much of what Mike says do you agree with? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll have to duke it out. <laughs> um, well, you know, it's yeah, whether you can call it what you, you want. It, it, it was uncalled for, you know, what they did. They, you know, they had the Republicans. What I went back to saying, you know, it's not whether it's right or wrong. It's like whether you're, it's a Republican thing or a Democratic thing up in in Congress, um, he, uh, the, he had, you know, four years of different leadership in there, you know, past things. Now we got the 50, 50 plus one. Um, but, you know, it goes back to what I'm saying. It's, it's not what uh, is, is right. right. And what uh, regarding racism, you got we got racism. Um, I bring that up with you all the time, Mike. Um, yep. uh, I don't want to go back too much in history, World War II, and even today over here, we, we had uh, some something in the news with the police chief. It, it, it's it's a sensitive thing. Um, I, I don't think it's really Democrat or Republican thing, though. Uh, it's. Uh, Media, one is the media hype too, you know, they go, whatever they can sell the news, right? They're gonna put it in the press. Okay, let's, let's, um, let's go to, let's go to voting, okay, voting. Um, you know, around the country, we've seen all kinds of shenanigans about voting, about stopping people from voting. Um, and uh, gerrymandering, uh, suppression of voting, manipulation of the ballot box, intimidation of minority voters. Uh, Mike, Mike, you you don't take that seriously. It's not a problem. But, well, let's limit it to Hawaii, which is what we know. And I worked in the elections from the delivery and collection team and for the last 35, 40 years. And Kauai, Kauai special. Kauai voting with uh, managed by the clerk's office and the office of elections and the elections officer here on Kauai. It's all amicable here. In Honolulu, they'll back up for hours, but you won't see that on Kauai. Ka Kauai, we're, we're congenial. And there, there's been a lot of talk. There's Republicans, Democrats, all that other stuff, labels. There's, there's a, one of the more conservative politicians is a fellow named Kali'i Akina who's an OHA director. And the biggest thing I learned from him is it's issues, not labels. We're, you and Dennis and I are all flinging labels around, but what's, what's the issue? The issue is what politics is meant to resolve. And on Kauai, it, election's no issue. If you wanna vote, vote. And with the uh, Mail-in voting, it's its more a matter of education than anything else, and that's why they had the lines in Honolulu. Well, there's a bill there's a bill in the ledge right now calling for automatic uh, registration for voting, uh, AVR, automatic vote registration. Yep. Um, I, I don't think it's passed yet. I'm not sure if, who uh, supports it and who opposes it, but how do you feel about it, Mike? It, that's fine with me. The, the, the one issue that they're discussing in the ledge now is where there's automatic in or automatic out, where you can opt in or you can opt out. Right now, the ledge is the law is suggesting that automatic voter registration when you get your driver's license, unless you opt out. Um, there, are some, there are some proponents that say you should be able to opt in, not be automatically registered without your permission. If you get a driver's license- I think license, they amended the bill, they amended the bill. 
in the, uh, I think it was the Senate, they, they amended the bill um, to say that you have to opt in rather than opt out. Okay. And, that's the way and, it stands right now. I think it's fair either way, but, and, and it's a good thing. Yeah. With We upped our percentage voters with this uh, universal mail-in ball balloting. Makes it easy for everybody. Um, there's well, some but, argument that. But, but uh, Dennis, if, you know, if you can, if you say that all kinds of voting is okay, we here in Hawaii, you know, we don't have racism, or at least not a lot, and say that, um, you know, we, we believe in open, you know, fair voting, no limitations, no suppression. How come 40% uh, or less of the electorate who can vote votes? If I were either of you guys, I'd be mighty ticked off at that. 40%, that's shameful, isn't it? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. One of us is on the elections uh, commission and it's not me, so. Ah. <laughs> um, not me. In, in, a way, in a way, like Andy, Ro Andy Rooney <laughs> said, like, you know, when they say like, everybody should vote, Andy Rooney said. Don't vote if you don't know the issues. I don't want you canceling my vote. <laughs> well, that's a very good point. You know, if people don't know which end is up, yeah, uh, and they and they vote on, on name recognition yeah. or worse, on exactly. racial, on, you know, on 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 racial recognition. Exactly. You know? Yeah, uh, and, and that's really not getting us anywhere. And in fact, it's likely to be you know the the luck or unluck of the draw and give us bad officials that way if you don't know who you vote. So how do we fix that, Dennis? Yeah. Um, well, uh, education, of course, it's easier said than done. You know, like we got on Kauai, we have uh, the electric company or the co-op owned by the whole island. Yeah, you see, we get election every year. Uh, you know, we got 30 something thousand members and you can get in with 3000 votes. So, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you see, works very well though, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does work, you know, but um, you know, some some guys that know the issues don't vote, I guess they just toss the ballot away, which is what a lot of people, a lot of my friends don't vote, you know, on the regular elections. But, you know, they say don't vote to complain, but of course they complain anyway. So, you know, so honestly, if, if, you see, if you see a candidate on the ballot that you don't know, Say OHA. OHA is a good example. <laughs> yeah, I was you don't you don't know this candidate. Yeah. So what do you what do you do? You, you yeah. pick up the phone, right? And you call up some friend of yours and you say, What about this guy, Kali'i Akina? Should I vote for him? Okay. Is that what you do? What do you do? How do you handle yeah. well, somebody you don't know? Mike, what do you do? I look it up before and I read the headlines. What or we could re we could reduce the voting age to sixteen or seventeen the way they're proposing, but I I don't think I don't think that's gonna get participation. Participation is because people have an interest in one one or two things or one or two candidates. That's that's who votes. You get the interest, but it we've become so jaded under there. I don't you know I don't understand six or seven zeros behind a one in money. And we, we're talking trillions. I have no concept what a trillion dollars is. I have no concept what $250 billion or million dollars in Kauai budget. And I don't know what the Honolulu budget is, but you know, you look at those big numbers and I can't, I can't understand them and I'm a math guy. Well, you remember what Everett Dirksen used to say. That. I think he was a Republican, by the way. He yeah. said, it. A trillion here and a trillion there. After a while, it gets into real money. End quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I'm 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 just um, very concerned that uh, the voters here in Hawaii um, don't really have a handle, and they don't have a way of learning about it. And you're right, Mike. They could look it up, but they don't look it up. And then you get a you get people who don't vote at all, ever in their lives. It's not acceptable. Not, not in a free society, not in a, you know, a democratic republic. And B, you get, you get them voting for the wrong person. And that includes not only local, but national elections too. It troubles me, for example, and I'll throw this at both of you, that I have it on good authority that one third 
of the electorate in Hawaii voted for Trump last November 3rd. Um, Dennis, what do you think of that? Uh, I don't <laughs> want to think about it. Um, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I got friends on both sides, extreme, you know, like some like, uh, they still remain my friend, but we argue and we're not going to change each other's mind. Some of my other friends to go like, why are you friends with that guy? He voted for Trump. <laughs> um, so let me get, they don't, uh, you know, didn't really want to go into a Trump bashing or anything, but um, they, they, they just see beyond what that if they see, you know, if he's going to uh, do good financially, or oh, he's, uh, he got money, you know, he, he must know what to do and stuff like that. And um, they just put their blinders on. Going back to the previous comment about, you know, oh, <laughs> tell, tell you the truth, I made a mistake. I thought was voting for Governor YA when his son first ran for OHA and I voted for her. And he's been in there ever since. <laughs> you know, you can't get your ballot back, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I'm sure that a lot of other people uh, did the same thing. Oh, I'm sure. So when, oh. when you talk, talk about these politicians and you talk about the education of the voters, um, it's it's a popularity contest. And then when you get these guys elected like Trump or Biden, either one, they, they're up they're up on a pedestal and what do they think? They're they're fighting over the money up there. There's there's so much money, there's so much pork that um, I don't I don't think a friend of mine said you, you elect a politician so they'll compromise their integrity so you don't have to compromise yours. Oh, so, Mike, what, what, you know, you, you've heard of COVID, right? I've, I've heard of it. Heard of it. Okay, so what kind of a job do you think the Republican administration did over the course of 2020 on dealing with the COVID epidemic? And, uh, so, you're using labels again like Republican, and you're saying Republicans did the thing about COVID. Well, what, what about our mayor, Derek Kawakami? How did he do with COVID? I think he's done terrific. And if you look at the numbers of the COVID cases on Kauai, I'd call that a success. And then the what, state Kauai led- has what, 28,000 people? <laughs> More like 70, 75,000. Okay, I'll go to 75. I'll even raise it to 78. But, but the bottom line is uh, that's not 330 million. That's not 330 million, but we're, I, I only live on Kauai. I don't live with 330 million. In the state of Hawaii, 1.2, 1.3 million. You talk about doing science and using the statistics. Well, Kauai has been successful managing COVID. But now the state of Hawaii wants to make Kauai just like the rest of the state of Hawaii. Why isn't it the, why isn't it the reverse? Kauai has been successful in managing COVID with a second test. That's science. That's CDC, that's everybody else. Why is the state of Hawaii want to be, make Kauai oh, just like them? It's, so it's that a, good, it's a good question. Outbreak? It's a really good question. But remember that Derek Kamakami ultimately joined the rest of the state on COVID. Hmm? Not yet. In April, In he April. joined the rest of the state for a month. The things went kablooey. He said, no, shut them down. And now we're back to zero cases a day. Can the state of Hawaii say that? No. You know, the logic doesn't apply to politics and government. Mike, what do you think? Mike, you were Mike, talking, you Mike, you're not talking like a Republican Mandarin. now. I'm, I'm talking to, you know, I, my business is doing fine. Real estate business doing fine. A lot of my friends in the hotel and the, um, the commercial uh, uh, businesses, they're going under. They, they're hurting bad. So there was, you know, we... Uh, met you know via Zoom with the mayor, and a lot of them were begging. You know, said yeah, we we cannot survive. We you know we cannot just wait for the handouts. You know, some of them just say I'm closing, which they did. Just the other day, and you know, some other businesses just shut down for good. Uh, you know, they gotta have some kind of balance. It's easy to say, but uh, that that's the definition of politics. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to have putting labels on it. Let me ask you, we only we only have a minute left here. Um, let me ask you, um, you know, for your your thought that you would tell our viewers about politics. Um, you know, I, I'll put it this way, Mike. Uh, are we in good shape? Is our system working? Is our system working on Kauai? Is our system working in, in the state, in the state of Hawaii? And is our system working nationally? What do you think? I, I don't think at every level. I, I think the, the spending to satisfy the voters, to elect the officials, to negotiate the union contracts that aren't funded in the, aren't funded by taxes, is a, it's a downward spiral that every great civilization has experienced. We're we've taken so much for granted for so long that um, Americans are fat, dumb, and happy. And they don't know what's coming. And you we think have the country's on a decline? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, uh, through this. As, as uh, I think it was the uh, former speaker, I was people knew, he said all politics is local. I think, yep. I don't know if you can correct me if I'm wrong on the uh, author of that. But uh, perhaps we might see a cha change in tide. You know, when you have a wave, you know, when you go too much in one direction, you know, people get fed up. Like a wave in a harbor, it goes all the way one way, it's coming back. Uh, we, we might see a change, you know, like just as we saw a change in the past in Hawaii, you know, from, you know, the Republicans to the Democrats. And we had a brief thing with Lingo. On Kauai, we had, uh, I don't know what you call it, the Democrat version of Rhino, you know, they just in name only, like you mentioned, Mike. We had a mayor just change party just for the sake of getting the democratic voters and if you know they vote the party it's uh i don't know if we got nonpartisan now so party probably means less but politics still remain there yeah yeah you know i keep thinking of that phrase uh, politics is a blood sport and uh, I wonder, you know, last question, what you guys think that politics is a blood sport? Is it a sport? And it is a blood sport, Mike. It's a participatory sport. It's, it's democracy by who shows up. And that's what you're talking about voters, who votes, 40% vote, 60%, you know, another 10% would make the election go either way. Democracy okay. by who shows up. Okay, there you go. Okay, Dennis, you close. Yeah, We're yeah, yeah, done here. I, yeah, I believe, it is, I believe it is a sport, and there are people who can play it very well. You know, like it or not, some you know, some do good for the people, which is what we all hope for. Um, and like I said, the party over here, you know, kind of like merge, but um, on on locally anyway, and uh, it, which is a good thing, I think. But uh, there are some guys that we up in uh, DC see things differently. As I pointed out, you know, you get some ideas that they won't listen to if it came from the other, other side of the aisle. It was never supposed to be a career. Yeah, I wish we could go back to Term limits. Days. Term limits. There's so many issues to discuss uh, at a time. And Dennis Asaki, uh, Mike Curtis, thank you so much for joining us today. Great hey, thanks to for having examine us. Thanks, your thoughts and, and, uh, and your political, I don't want to say aspirations, but your political views. Eh? <laughs> thanks, Jay. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank Aloha. You. Dennis, Aloha. Bye.